champions and the boxing superstars, where are you? I'm waiting, let's fight. I'm the most avoided boxer. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire proudly presents something the boxing games are missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. All right, so it's been a number of years since I made a video about Alexander Vosdick, but, you know, he's obviously a great fighter, you know, former gold medalist, former WBO light heavyweight champion. But, you know, he's had a weird career because he became champion. He was the uh, lineal champion because he knocked out Adonis Stevenson to become lineal champion. Then he lost the fight to Better Beev in 2019, uh, the, big, the big unification fight that they had in Philadelphia. And then he gets abruptly retired from boxing and from, like, the latter part of 2019 to this year, we didn't hear a whole lot about Alexander Gvozdik. He, all we really heard was that he was Canelo's sparring partner. That's all we heard. And this year, he's he's gotten back active. He's kind of come out of his uh his his prolonged sabbatical from boxing. Um, he's had two fights this year. You know, he had a fight. His first fight was on, on a little Marv Nation card. He fought a, a, a journeyman fighter named Jose. Uh, Josue Obando, who was uh, 20, 34, and 2, beat him by a six-round UD. Then came back um, for a second fight in May and fought Richard Bolotniks, the same Richard Bolotniks that fought Joshua Boazzi and knocked him out in six rounds. So he's only taking him two fights, and Alexander Gvozdik has is already fighting Joshua Boazzi level competition. So like, it kind of shows you where he's at, where Boazzi's at, and where Alexander Gvozdik could be heading. But um, the nail... Vazdik went to Twitter, or uh, Instagram, I should say, and on his story, he, he posted this picture. Now, the, the picture is, is from, I think, the Olympics or the World Championship, I can't tell. But um, he's obviously got the gold medal, and uh, to, his, to his left, right, to his, to his left, you got Dimitri Bivol. Um, you got Dimitri Bivol, or to his right, I should say, to his right, you got Bivol um, standing there with the silver medal. So he beat Bivol. In one of the tournaments and um he put a caption and he said bivol what an unfortunate defeat do you want a rematch now the reason i'm talking about this and then you're making a video is because about this is because i feel with the recent canelo news um and with the whole wbc sanctioning uh the whole like russian fighter thing they, they're not allowing russian fighters to fight for the belt even though better be if it's russian himself I feel like this could be a legitimate option for Dimitri Bivol. This was a fight that, you know, four years ago uh, was a fight people wanted to see. People wanted to see the nail and Bivol unify the titles. They wanted to see the two of the best amateur fighters from around that weight get it on and, and try to unify the belts. And it didn't happen because Alexander Vazek ultimately wound up fighting better be of lost and then retired. But he's active again. He, he's got wins. We know he's got the experience. We know that... He's a, we, we know that that if he's anywhere close to his best, he's a top, he's a top fighter in boxing. Um, I'd love to see it because they're both, I think, Bivol and Alexander Gvazdik are, are very similar. They have some similarities in style about how they go about the business in the ring. Um, both are, are, are long, rangy fighters. I would say that the nail, Alexander Gvazdik, he's, a, he's more of a... A power punch in the Bivol is Bivol is a guy that leans more towards that of a boxer. Uh, Vaza can obviously box too, but he's more of a of a power puncher than he is a boxer. Uh, if we're comparing Bivol and his style and how they go about their business in the ring, um, I love to see it because with the way things are shaking out at like heavyweight, you know we're not gonna get better BF versus Bivol ever it seems because of the fact that you have. Mauricio Suleiman of the WBC playing God and not allowing uh, them to fight for all the belts. You got um, promoter stuff. You got network situations. It's 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 it's, it's honestly like it's getting like it's, it's bullshit honestly. And you know as much as I look, I don't like Crawford and Spence. I can't stand that fight. You guys know I actually hate that fight. I, I kind of hope that like the fight doesn't even happen because I'm, I'm just so tired of hearing about Crawford and Spence. But. They made the fight happen, so I can't. I can, I can only criticize, but so much the fight is done. It's signed, sealed, and delivered. Shout out to Al Heyman and the five folks at PBC. So now my attention's got to shift to Bivol and Better Beer. They need to make this fight happen. I mean, I, there's, 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 been, there's been rumblings in boxing circles about Bivol wanting too much money and pricing himself out of fights and things like that. I don't know because I'm, I'm not privy to that information. 
but I hear, I see it on Twitter, I've seen a couple people in boxing say on, on social media, Facebook as well. So, you know, who knows? But uh, what I do know is that Bivol versus Alexander Gvazdik, in the meantime, in the, in the intermediate time, if we can't get Bivol versus Canelo, if we can't get Bivol versus, uh, most importantly, Bivol versus Better Be Ever Undisputed, then why not fight one of the, one of the guys that was champion around the same time when Bivol became champion? You know, the guy's active, the guy seems to be match fit again. He seems to have regained the fire and desire back for the sport of boxing after Better Be Ever beat the hell out of him, you know, when they fought. So why not? Why not? And it would give a chance. It would give a chance to be able to, to avenge one of his losses in the amateurs, and maybe settle some of the questions that we had of, uh, you know, that 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 crop of light heavyweights that came up after Andre Ward left the division. You know, when Andre Ward left the light heavyweight division, the the, the belts fragmented, or some some of the belts fragmented, and basically you had better be a Bivol Vazic. You know, the the new wave of um, Russian and Ukraine fighters dominating the division. And there were a lot of questions at that time. I remember like, you know, 2019, there were a lot of questions as to who people thought was the best. Some people thought Bivol was the best. Some people thought Better Be was the best. Some people thought Alexander Gvazdik was the best. I, I, I was, believe it or not, at that time, um, I was really big on Alexander Gvazdik. He was probably my favorite one because I, I, I like the fact, I like the style. I like the fact that he wasn't overly a puncher or overly a boxer. He was just a happy medium of both. And uh, he could really fight. And um, he's probably giving Better Be Ever, along with Callum Johnson, his toughest test to date. So you know, you know, he's a damn good fighter. But he's getting Better Be Ever's toughest fight to date. But um, and you would probably, I'd probably say that's the that's Better Be Ever's best win on his resume is is, is Alexander Vazdik because he was a damn good fighter. If you look what he, did, what he did to guys like Adonis Stevenson, and even what he did to, did to Better Be Ever in spots of that fight, and then his amateur pedigree, it, it shows you how great of a fighter he was. But uh, this is definitely be an interesting match. I I I, I don't know. Politically, where Alexander Gavazic is at in his career, I'm not sure who he's aligned with. But Bivol needs fights. You know, he beat Canelo Alvarez, or better yet, as you say here on True School Sports, Bivol exposed Canelo. And, um, you know, he hasn't been able to really capitalize or build off that momentum. So he got to get some fights at some point. And hopefully uh, this could be an option that's considered. But uh, let, let, me know, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. What do you guys think of Bivol versus Alexander Gavazic? Um... To fight that was talking about in the past, but could it still be a good fight now? We, we don't know. We'll make it happen. We'll see. But uh, leave your comments down below. Make sure you guys take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just kidding from Daniel. So until next time, take your eyes. Thank you for watching another video on the Untouchable True Sports Empire. We're here at the Hatanaka Boxing Gym in Nagoya, Japan. And uh, more great videos just like this one, make sure you guys click right here.